Hello, everyone, and welcome to the We Are Not Giving Up Heroes panel. My name is Joy Squire, and I'm the Chief Communications Officer for the Illinois Region of the Red Cross. I've been lucky to be part of the Heroes event for several years, and I can just tell you that this year is especially moving. There are so many great heroes that we want to introduce you to. So I want to get started today and have you hear a little bit about each hero's story. So I'm going to start with Carter and Noah Collins from Park Ridge, who are our blood services heroes. Carter and Noah, can you tell us a little bit about your story? Yeah, thank you. We're glad to be here. So we set up a blood drive after Hurricane Harvey devastated Texas and Louisiana. Uh, it expanded into an annual blood drive. And this year in 2020, we faced uh, issues with COVID getting a location, but we raised funds to have it this year. Thank you for telling us about that, Carter and Noah. So exciting. And now I'm going to send it to Megan. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? Megan Murphy, who's our healthcare hero out of Rock Island. My name is Megan Murphy, and I'm the nurse manager of the medical and surgical intensive care units at Unity Point Health Trinity in Rock Island and the intensive care unit at the Bettendorf, Iowa campus as well. I, so normally we have the three ICUs and to accommodate our rapid growth of COVID-19 patients this year, we had to expand into a fourth ICU and then a fifth ICU. So we essentially had five ICUs accommodating uh, many, many patients. And that's a little bit about why I'm here. <laughs> Oh, thanks so much, Megan. I know this year with COVID has been so trying for everyone and particularly the healthcare workers like yourself. I wanna introduce another healthcare worker who represents a group of amazing women at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Rocky Colanto is one of the healthcare heroes and she is here to tell her story. Can you tell us a little bit, Rocky, about your story? Yes. Um... I am representing the so-called old dolls at Dr. Western Memorial Hospital. We all started when we were young, before we had kids, we are single, we go out. <laughs> and then we stick around and still working in the ICU, but separate ICUs. So when the pandemic came, um, especially us, I mean, they asked, we are considered as a high risk because most of us like 60 and above. So besides that, uh, me uh, personally, I'm taking care of my 92 years old mom at the same yeah. time. So I am considered more high risk than anyone else. <laughs> and so we, uh, we were asked, actually we were asked, we can go in any other ICUs, not to be actively working with the COVID patients, uh, but then we all decided to stay. Thank you, um, amazing story, Rocky. We appreciate you and all the healthcare workers out there this year. It has been such a tough year and we know that you've all worked so very hard and we're so grateful. Now I'd like to go to another um, amazing hero, Roy Webb, who's the superintendent of Quincy Public Schools. Education was also another area that was challenged during this pandemic. Roy, can you tell us a little bit about your story? Well, and uh, what an incredible group that you have here <laughs> and uh, appreciate and uh, being just a, a part of the panel with, uh, with these heroes. I will tell you, I don't really see myself as a hero. I really see myself more as a manager of heroes. Uh, you know, when the governor shut down schools last year uh, for safety reasons, uh, my staff, my team uh, built everything from scratch. Nothing existed. Remote learning, uh, getting meals to kids throughout our community, uh, all the safety protocols, every, nothing really existed. So uh, my team of uh, teachers, administrators, school nurses, cooks, custodians, uh, bus drivers, uh, they all did an amazing job all year. And I was just a manager of heroes as they each took <laughs> off and, and did incredible things. Very proud of uh, the Quincy Public Schools. Thank you, Roy. Um, I'm gonna ask everybody a little bit more of a specific question about their area. And I wanna start with you, since you were talking about the Quincy School District and all that went on and the amazing heroes that you manage in the staff and students and parents each and every day. Why was it so important to you that you were able to help the people in your community during what was an unprecedented and really difficult time for education? You know, we come from a community, Quincy. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty diverse community uh, with some very affluent individuals, and then, uh, but we're 60% poverty 
and we have some families that come from severe poverty. So uh, early in March, uh, when uh, we knew we weren't gonna have school, we worried about those kids. And my uh, food service director went almost immediately, had a plan ready to go. We were going to 26 different locations, delivering breakfast and lunch meals uh, to all of our kids. Uh, and it was a true uh, community effort. And you know, remember in those early times, people really didn't know about you know the pandemic or what were the risks, yeah. but uh, it didn't really matter. When I asked for volunteers uh, to travel around in buses and to hand out food or to hand out packets or to get uh, technology into kids' hands, uh, I had hundreds of volunteers uh, from my staff that, that raised their hand and said, yep, I wanna be there for our kids. Thank you. So proud that you were able to do that and we can honor you as a hero today. Rocky, I wanna go back to you. Um, okay. You had the opportunity to be assigned to a different area of the hospital, a different ward. We didn't know much about COVID as it was coming, but you opted to stay even at great personal risk as did your other colleagues who are part of the old dolls. Why was it staying so important for you and caring for those patients? Uh. But this is very new and very scary when we first came in. I know, Megan, uh, you opened up a lot of ICUs, and so did we. We have five ICU total at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in downtown. And we open up one at a time, and in one week, we open up four. Wow. So, yeah. So the influx is very fast, and most of them are fatal. So in, and the acuity of the patients is really heavy. And instead of, like, let's say, uh, two ICU patients to one nurse, we need one and one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why am I going to leave my unit? They need me more than ever. I feel like it was an emergency because in one day, when we, when we open up an ICU, the same day we filled up that night. Wow. So you really can't say no. I mean, it's just like, it's, we just like found ourselves like working more than, we, than before. No one asked us to work more, but we can like, everyone volunteers, even the people who doesn't want to work overtime, they are there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the whole team it's not only me, but everyone at Northwestern, it's everyone is there. And we could see all the senior people, the senior, I mean, the leadership people, I would say, they're all there to support us. And that mm -hmm. really, no one can even leave. No one is uh, like step up. I, our heart goes out to all the healthcare workers everywhere, you know, for all you've been doing and continue to do. And Megan, similarly, your bandwidth was already stretched. You were already managing ICUs. and you agreed to manage additional ICUs, take on additional staff and really make it work. You know, even if it took you away from your personal time and your family, tell us a little bit more about that, Megan. Sure, yeah, thank you, Joy. Uh, we needed to open up more units to accommodate for the increase of COVID-19 patients in our community, uh, much like communities, communities around the country. And it was never really a question, uh, kind of like Rocky had said, you know, we did what we needed to do to step up for our community. And I'm so proud of each and every one of our ICU team and really our organization and hospitals around the country. Um, everyone rose to the challenge and worked together so well. And it was truly impressive to witness and to watch and be part of something that was so much bigger than just yourself. I did feel stretched thin at times, um, but in those times, I just relied heavily on my amazing team and uh, who really did show up and they rose to the challenge every single shift. And I have amazing family and friends as well who were truly supportive. So that really helped me. Yeah, the family and friends are also the heroes in this moment as they made it possible for you, our healthcare workers, to help us through this difficult time. Mm -hmm. Carter and Noah, why was it important for you all to continue to have your blood drive in the midst of the pandemic when school was shut down? Tell us a little bit more about why you pursued and persevered and posted your drive. People in our community are always looking for a way to help. So it's easy for for them to just have, there's not many blood drives in Park Ridge. So we wanted to have one closer for people to get to. Mm -hmm. And also kids our age, they want to help, but they don't really know how yet. So when we host the blood drive, it gives an option for kids in high school 
to go out and help the community. Well, thank you, Carter and Noah, for doing that. We appreciate that at the Red Cross, and we know how important life-saving blood is. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs blood, and your generous blood drive helped those in need at this difficult time. Now, panel, I'd just like to say if there's one piece of advice that any of you would like to leave the audience with, you were selected by the community as a hero for obvious reasons, and they want to hear what your piece of advice is about being a hero. Megan, how about if I start with you on one last piece of advice? Uh, I would just like to, first of all, just say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have supported a healthcare professional in the past year. It's been the most difficult year by far of most of our careers, and it's been made easier by the outpouring of love and support we've felt from our communities. And I'm not really sure we would have gotten through it without each and every one of you, truly. Hospitals around the country have really truly learned how strong and resilient they are. And I really feel that we felt that locally here. Uh, so I would just say, I, you know, we're not through the woods completely yet mm -hmm. with this pandemic. So please continue to take things seriously and do your part. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get there very soon. Um, but I would just like to say thank you to everyone for all of your love and prayers. And thank you for all that you've done during this pandemic. You're right. We're not through the woods yet, but hopefully getting closer. So each and every day. Carter and Noah, how about you? What piece of advice would you guys like to leave um, the audience with today? We would just like to say over the last three years, we have learned a lot and have had a lot of fun running these blood drives. And the Red Cross team is very passionate about helping others. And they have given us um, many ways to help people through our blood drives. And there is definitely a strong need for blood donations today. And we couldn't ask for a better partner than Red Cross has been. And if anyone's wondering how to help, I strongly encourage them to uh, contact Red Cross. Thank you. Thank you guys. You're amazing examples for your peers and your community. Thank you. Rocky, how about you? Any piece of advice that you would like to leave everyone with today? Um, encourage people to get vaccination. I, I also volunteer in vaccination. I mean, I really encourage because I know there's a lot of hesitancy out, out there not to get it, but at least we have that and just get it. Mm -hmm. um, also, thank you for everyone. Um, during that time, we felt our community is also very supportive of us. You could see the placard outside the hospital, go, go, go. And that really like encouraged us to do more. Uh, it's not only the nurses, it's not only us in the healthcare, but also the whole community is very supportive. Everyone is supportive. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rocky. Roy, how about you? One last piece of advice. Coming into this, uh, people were very concerned about uh, our students, you know, would they wear masks? Would they, uh, would we have discipline problems? And uh, like I said, we have 6,700 Blue Devils and they have been amazing. They have been outstanding. Our next generation coming up, uh, they're amazing and we're in good hands. That's so great to hear. We are proud of this next generation coming up. They've certainly lived through something historic. Um, being in school during all of this, not easy. And we appreciate all that you've done for the Quincy Public Schools. Now, everybody, I'd like to say thank you. You are truly heroes. You've done such amazing work and amazing things. We at the Red Cross are proud to know each of you and proud to tell your stories. And thank you for everything you've done. You are great individuals and really are the model of what we call a hero. Thank you.